Stormgate has released a new patch, patch 0.1.3. Today, we're going to be doing a side-by-side -side comparison of all of the changes. Let's get into it! So let's start off with the general changes across the board. Projectile speed has been increased across the board, meaning that attacks that are shot will hit the target faster. Teching up to tier 2 for all factions, cost has been decreased from 150 Lumini and 100 Ethereum to 100 Lumini and 100 Ethereum. There's been a quality of life change for any ability that used to require targeting a main base in order to activate. Bob, Overcharge and Shroud Weave can now be targeted near a location and the game will auto-target on a nearby valid target. There's been general nerfs across the board to defensive abilities. Bob Overcharge Armor granted has been decreased from 50 to 25. Shroud Stone spawned from Shroud Stone Manifestation no longer receives the damage bonus. And Sovereign's Watch's charge up time has been increased from 90 seconds to 120 seconds. Right, we'll move on to Vanguard changes. Vanguard has generally seen less changes than the other two races. Scouts have had their damage increased against creep camps. They now have a bonus plus 5 versus creeps. Vulcans have seen a Ethereum cost reduction, reducing their total cost from 200 Lumini and 125 Ethereum to 200 Lumini and 100 Ethereum. Atlases have seen their weapon missile speed increased from 12 to 18. This should mean that Atlas shots are harder to dodge. All air units return to hangar heal rate has been increased from 5 health per second to 10 health per second. Evacs have had a health increase from 200 health to 250 health. On the other side, Helicarriers have seen a health decrease from 600 health to 500. Moving on to the Infernals, Effigies have had their On Shroud health decreased from 200 to 100. Roots have had a plethora of changes, I'll try and break down each one. They've had their cost increased from 100 to 125 Luminite. Their range has been increased from 0.5 to 1. Their slop range has been increased from 2 to 1.5. Slop range is the range of the ability that can still hit a target even if the target moves away. Effectively, these two changes nullify each other, theoretically making Brute's range around the same what it was before. Brute's outer radius has been decreased from 0.9 to 0.7, effectively making them a little bit smaller. The patch notes say that the weapon period has been increased, however the actual number has been decreased. The weapon period is how long it takes between two attacks, so the weapon period has been decreased from 2.2 seconds down to 1.5 seconds. To account for this, their damage has been decreased from 30 damage down to 20. Brutes will more quickly chase down a target after swinging. And finally, a slightly new mechanic for a lot of melee fighters is the swing reacquire range where effectively if they swing at a target and the target dies, they will retarget a new target within that range. That new range being 1. Fiends have seen their health decreased from 60 to 40, as well as their white health being decreased from 15 to 10. To compensate for this, Fiends' damage has been increased from 6 to 7. Hexen Adept Training, which unlocked Venom Mines, cost has been decreased from 100 Therium 100 Luminite to 50 Therium and 50 Luminite. Both the activation radius and the detonation radius for Venom Trap have been decreased. And finally, a slight change, Venom Traps will still now trigger each other, but instead of doing one slap of damage, they do all of their damage combined. Just a clarification, all of their damage combined if you're within range of each one. Weavers have seen their health decreased from 580 to 400. They've seen their white health decreased from 145 to 100. And the Lash Autocast has had a couple of nerfs to it. Number one, Lash's autocast will no longer intelligently discriminate units with higher supply costs. And two, Lash's autocast range has been decreased from 10 to 8. Hellborns have seen their cost decreased by 25 Therium. And Hellborns can now attack air units. If they attack an air unit, they will deal splash damage to air units. And if they attack ground units, they'll deal splash damage to ground units. Finally, the Shadow Flyer has had its damage increased. Its primary damage has been increased from 50 to 50 plus 20 versus heavy, and its splash damage has been increased from 25 to 25 plus 10 versus heavy. And moving on to the Celestials. Celestials have seen their Power Surge production bonus build speed decreased from 50% to 25%. Sovereign's Watch has regained the ability to attack structures and workers. Strike Node upgrade has been increased from 75 Luminite to 100 Luminite. Blast Nodes have also seen their cost increased from 75 Luminite to 100 Luminite. Blast Nodes have also seen their weapon period increased from 2 to 3. 
Collection Array's ability to morph to flying mode has been increased from 1 second to 5 seconds. Argent's build time has been increased from 26 seconds to 28 seconds. Vectors have seen their ground weapon damage changed from 6 to 6 plus light to just a flat 9 damage. Recall research duration has increased from 60 seconds to 90. Scythes have seen a collection of changes in order to make them more clear as to how they work. Pulse Shield has had its duration decreased from 10 seconds down to 2 seconds. Pulse Shield damage reduction has also been increased from 50% to 90%. Scythes used to have a trait which said the closer to the unit the more damage it did up to 100% bonus. This has been removed and replaced with a new upgrade called Tensor Pulse. Tensor Pulse gives Scythe weapons the ability to deal 100% bonus damage to air units within full range. They also have a new animation to show when they are doing that bonus damage. And finally, the Retaliation Matrix and its corresponding upgrade have been removed. My favourite ability in the game, Mind Shackle, has got buffs across the board. Its energy cost has been decreased from 75 to 50. Its cooldown, should it fail to go off, has been decreased from 60 to 20. And finally, its slop range has been increased from 1 to 5. This was apparently a bug and was never intended. Animancer's Animus Redistribution damage has been decreased from 30 to 20. However, the amount of energy it destroys per tick has been increased from 15 to 20. Finally, Dark Prophecy's slow debuff has been decreased from 50% debuff to 25%. Archangels have had their Luminite costs reduced by 50. They've had their ground and air weapon range increase from 0.75 to 1.5, and they've had their radius decrease from 1.4 to 1.2, again, making them a little bit smaller. And that was everything, thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you drop a like and subscribe. This video did take a lot of effort capturing all the footage, took me well over, I think, seven or eight hours in total. Um, so yes, I hope you've enjoyed this, hope you appreciated it. It's always nice seeing stuff side by side. I uh, hope you stick around, I'm making more RTS content across the board. I think my next video is probably going to be a Battle Aces video as I managed to get access to the beta for that. Um, but yes, otherwise, uh, I hope you'll see you all next time. Catch y'all later. Bye.